back. If you're new here, welcome. I talk about books and sometimes other things. The last time you saw my face right here, I was surrounded by luggage. I went to go visit a friend. It wasn't a very long away trip. It was just a short trip. Not very far, but it gave me a few days to decompress after the year of work that I had and, and <laughs> all the stuff that ensued with my illness and everything else. It was just, it was nice to get away and talk to another human being. Besides my husband, I love him, but you know, it was just nice to have some girl time and to read books uninterrupted because she gets it on to other things. I have my card and I'm ready to talk to you about the books that I read in June, which were 11. First being The Blood Gift by N.E. Devonport. This was part of a read along with Noria's Patreons and it was not what I expected, and I know I'm not alone. I expected the second book of the duology to have this really great and awesome finale, some more of the fight stuff, maybe some character growth, and I really didn't get that, and I just, I don't know. It wasn't supposed to be a YA book, but that's how it felt, and I think it was because of the maturity of the main character. They were more reactive. They didn't really, really think things through. It was all emotional stuff. I get it. I get it. You know, your grandpa gets murdered. It's going to make you react to stuff, I guess. There you go. I gave it a generous three blossoms. It wasn't a complete waste of time. And it was entertaining. Moving on. The next book that I picked up was The Path of Daggers by Robert Jordan. This is the eighth book in The Wheel of Time. Now, this is part of what they call the slog, I guess. But for me, all those books in between, even the ones that are kind of slow moving, are just part of that building of the world and just building the momentum towards that final battle that you know is coming in the end. Got some more of my favorite characters. Love Perrin. Love Egwene. Nanive, even with the hair pulling. There's just something about her. She's like the grumpy witch. That's how I think of her. It's just grumpy, you know, and bossy, but that's the way she is. So yeah, I enjoyed this. I gave this a three blossom. The next book I picked up was The Adventures of Amina El Sarafi. It was everything that people were talking about that I was expecting. I was expecting some fun, piratey stuff. And that's what I got. Amina is a retired pirate. She's got a house that she's, you know, a fixer upper. She's got a kid that she's taking care of. She's just building her life. But then someone comes along and kind of threatens that. So she gets pulled back into the whole pirating thing. And then adventures ensue and an ex-husband kind of shows up and there's, there's other stuff. I found it amusing and fun. Was it completely and totally serious? No. Is this the end all to be all book of all time? No. Did I have fun? Yes. Will I pick up the next book? Most definitely. This is by Shannon A. Chakravorty. This is the same author that wrote The City of Brass, which I absolutely loved. I love that Davabad trilogy. So the pirates, yes, give me more. I am enjoying this and I gave it a solid four, four blossoms. The next book that I picked up was the third book in the Boudicca series by Amanda Scott. This is Boudicca Dreaming the Hound. <sighs> Five blossoms. I'm loving this historical fiction. It's giving me everything that I love with the battles and the drama and... <sighs> yes. This story has all of the historical markers that are in it. There might be some things that are changed, of course, for fiction sake and for storytelling. Did it take away from it? Not at all. I expect the Romans to just, you know, be their Romaning selves. And did I expect the Celts to be like, nah, we, we really don't want you here. And the battles and the swords and the dreaming and the, oh, just, it was just amazing. It was amazing. And I cried quite a bit because anyone who knows anything about 
the Queen of Celts and the Boudicca and what happened between the Celts and the Romans and what happened with Boudicca and her family knows that it is not a pretty story at all. Things happened. I thought it wasn't going to be until the last book, but it happened. I was not okay, but I was okay because I really needed the next book right away. And it's a good thing that I already had it all ready to go to read in July. So moving on. You would think that after a hard hitting book like Boudicca and the things that were tackled at the end that were dark and grim and those themes that I would go for something light and fluffy, you know, like Discworld or something. But no, no, no. I decided to put it off because I really wanted to read Dark Age by Pierce Brown. This is the fifth book in the Red Rising saga. He's getting darker. He's getting grimmer. And there were things that happened that in my mind, I cannot unsee those images ever. And I want the next book, like now. This was Five Blossoms. I cannot wait for Lightbringer. I cannot wait to jump back into this, in this world. I love it. And there's Daro. <laughs> keep making really stupid things. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep going. Things happen I can't talk about because anything would really be a spoiler, but you've got Daro. He's doing his thing. <sighs> Just, it was so good. I need the next book. Yep, I do. But now. And of course, I finally decided to call Uncle. <laughs> it's time to tap out with the darker themes and the grimness and there were things that happened in the dark age that just tore my heart in two and I just can't wait for the next book and because of the themes at the end of Dreaming the Hound it was time for that light reading you know the comic relief so who better to give me comic relief than Terry Pratchett's Discworld books mm -hmm. so I'm continuing the around the disc in 800 days it's been a fun ride and we continue with the reaper man and riches of witches abroad i think that's what it is aboard abroad board don't know putting them here both of them were four blossom reads for me they gave me exactly what i needed at the exact right time the reaper man is of course about death he's decided to take a break unscheduled and he doesn't leave anybody in charge. Death is still happening. But death isn't there to do his job. Things happen. It's funny. I enjoyed it. Then I picked up Witches Aboard. And off they go on their brooms. Granny Weatherwax. Granny Hog. Or is it Nanny Hog? Doesn't matter. And they're off to do whatever hijinks are going to ensue to take care of something that isn't being done right. Because you know what? Granny, Granny Weatherwax has a way of doing things and you have to do them that way or they're just, it's just not right. It's just not correct. So yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm going to continue the Discworld because I'm having fun. I'm just going to have to put those books in where I need them the most. It just seems wise. Now, after our disappointment of the blood gift, Noria's Patreon group, me included in that group, I'm in, I'm in that group, we chose another book. We chose the first book, In the Earthsea, by Ursula K. Le Guin, Wizard of Earthsea. This is more of a middle grade, I would guess, fantasy, and it is a really good intro if anybody is wanting to dip their toes into fantasy and they're not sure, especially teens and, and young middle graders. So I recommend it for them. I gave The Wizard of Earthsea four blossoms. It was fun. You have your grumpy dragon. I love the grumpy dragon. I might continue the series just for the grumpy dragon if I get more grumpy dragon. Just say it. Dragons going to pull me in anyways. After those three lighter reads, 
I picked up Malice, finally, by John Wynn. I wasn't going to. I was going to hold off on the uh, Faithful and the Fallen until the end of the, closer to the end of the year. But I decided, you know what? It's summer. I'm in the mood. I'm going to read some fantasy. This gave me everything I love about fantasy. It gave me the battles. It gave me some fight scene stuff. It, and John Gwyn writes that stuff really well. Uh, it gave me animal companions. It gave me a grumpy magic wielding lady who lives in the woods. Made me think of my friend Tracy, who I think could fit that bill. And it gave me mentors and a boy that's, I can't wait to follow this um, young man into adulthood and what's going to happen and, and ensue because there's going to be a final battle at the end of these. And I'm so glad I bought all four books at the same time because I'm, I'm going to read, I'm going to read all, all of them. I'm going to read them all probably before I go back to work. Just saying. This was a five blossom read. And I can't wait to jump back into this world. Valor is next. And it is just sitting on my desk, ready for me to pick up as soon as I finish my current read. Before going on my trip, I needed something to listen to. And since I needed a buzzword for the month of June, and it was other, I said, I'll find a book. I didn't have anything with other. So I said, I'll make a stretch. We'll use brother, mother, another, anything like that in the title. It was a subtitle but I'm making it work. It was Craving Steel Brothers Book One. Got my buzzword out of the way, but unfortunately it caused me a great deal of pain to do so. It was a 2.5 for me. And I don't, I don't, I don't. It wasn't horrible. I just, I don't know if trauma mance, that's what I'm gonna call it, trauma romance, trauma mance is a thing for me. I don't think it's my thing. I don't, I don't, it's definitely not something where if you're reading the book and they finally get to the trauma that happened, happens in the last couple of chapters with no happy ending for anybody because it's part of a small series, I guess. So, yeah, not 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 a good idea not before bed while you're packing to go visit a friend because i had that stuff on my mind and i was like i really need to talk to somebody about this book <sighs> mm. anyways if anybody's curious about it go ahead check it out it's by helen hart it's it's, it's i'm gonna be fine i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna be i'm gonna be okay i am so I got caught up on all of my watch later videos because I love to watch y'all. Some of you I follow, some of you follow me. I like to keep 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 track of it, what everybody's doing, what everybody's what's going on. But it takes me a little while to get to those videos, but I finally did while I was visiting my friend. She had needed to finish her MC romance. She loves those biker romances. And then we were finally able to to read the book that we chose. We waited a whole year. We chose this book last year. I said, oh, you know, we really liked the book that we read because it was polyamorous. And we we're like, hey, this is kind of nice. Let's see if we can find something else that we might like. And we found one that we thought, hey, this came recommended. You have a woman who is ready to move. She's ready to make a big change in her life. She's decided that professoring is not her thing anymore. She's going to go and open up a bakery in a town far away from where she lives. She gets there. She meets a firefighter. She meets a cop. They're friends. They both like her. She instantly likes them. There you go. My friend and I decided that we were going to probably not continue this Seaport um, series because we found the book to be a little, um, not quite so flowy when it came to changing the, um, 
whose POV you were listening to and also what was happening. I mean, one minute you could be in a bathroom at your bakery and the next you're, you're someplace else. It was very confusing. So we, we decided we, we were good and I gave this a 2.5. I, I, it wasn't a horrible, complete waste of time. I did learn a little something. I did learn that I can find better. We, um, we took a few minutes and we discussed things and then we decided, you know what, we, we, we need, we need some love and romance that's really going to make us happy. And we both, we have this thing for, you know, pride and prejudice. And I'm like, wait, you know, what's going to be it's full of romance and maybe some hot dudes. Let's, let's finish watching Bridgerton. Yeah. So we were two episodes in last year, so we saved it. So we said, we binged watch the hell out of that we binge we finished season one we went into season two and then we were kind of sad because there isn't another season wait 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 queen charlotte but it was my last day we finished the last two episodes of bridgerton season two and we said we're going to save Queen Charlotte for next year. Also, we're not picking a book to wait and read next year. We're going to wait and pick it when we get together again. We've decided that's the, the wise decision in case we pick something we really... Hmm. <sighs> I need to teach her to DNF because I should have DNF that book. I really should have. So although June ended with a dud... My July is going really well so far. I've finished about seven books. I have a lot of things that are going on. The last half of the month, I have a hair appointment where I'm also going to do nails and my feet and my hair. And just because it's like a birthday present to myself because my birthday is this month. It's at the end of the month on July 31st. I can't wait. That's also the night that Pink is doing her concert in Boston. And I will be there with my sisters. I'm so excited. And we're planning the Boston Aquarium that weekend and maybe a trip into Salem. That'll be fun. So yeah, I'm, I'm, ex I'm excited for all the things that are going on. There's other stuff. There's something that I'm forgetting. I don't, I don't really know what it is. Oh, I have a new neurologist that I'm meeting this week, which is awesome. That's it. That's it for now. I, I got to end this here and go finish my current read. I hope whatever you are doing, you are finding joy in. I hope that you're having a blast. I hope you're enjoying your summer. Staying cool, drinking your fluids, your water. Stay hydrated. Get some electrolytes in there if you need to. So that's it. Until next time. Bye.